This is the Power Break Podcast number 309, titled Finding Enjoyment on the Job. Hi, everyone. I'm Bob Brubaker, along with JT, as we hope you'll stay tuned as we seek to give you a little power in this break to help you succeed in the race of life. This, the Power Break Podcast, with a focus on the spiritual, the mental, and the physical aspects, all to help you succeed in the race of life. For show notes from today's podcast, go to BobRubaker.com and follow the link for the Power Break Podcast. All right, here we are, man, once again in the studio. Right on. We're doing this studio in North Carolina, the studio in Clearwater, Florida, and we bring the two together miraculously through the digital recording. It's a, How do you like that? It's a big studio, buddy. It's a big studio. Yeah, yeah. Well, let's uh, talk about our, our listeners. We always like to talk about the listeners because this is what the program, well, first of all, to the Lord, but then secondly, to the listeners, because we want to provide something for you all. And what you do for us is uh, leave a rating and or review wherever you download the podcast and help to spread the word about the Power Break podcast. Thank you very much. Yep. We appreciate it. We've talked about algorithms. I think everybody probably knows all that deal. Um the most important part really is that we just really appreciate that we have so many listeners that listen every single week and, um, yeah, and get something out of it. So it's awesome. Yeah, we appreciate it. Let's shout out to, first of all, Hammer Nutrition and their Chain Breaker Coffee. If you'd like to check that out, check out hammernutrition.com. And, of course, the, the deal that they have for people that listen to the podcast, the Power Break podcast, and mention it, here's how you do that. You go to hammernutrition.com slash B-O-B-71470. If you want to know that link, it's there in the show notes and on the website, bobbrewbaker.com. And what happens is you get a 15% discount on your first order and enjoy 25 percent in free product credit so there you go check it out any shout outs today for anyone else there jt yeah for uh my friend mikey i just wanted to say um he, he's a listener uh i see him he's one of my riding buddies so um i really appreciate you listening man and i appreciate your friendship and yeah it's just another person listening to the power break podcast bob crazy Wow, it, it grows all the time. And I want to say shout out to a faithful listener. He's known as Bones, also old Patrick. But <laughs> old you know, Patrick. one of the things about he's uh, uh, he's coming back and he's doing some rehab and he's really, really working hard. I just wanted to say a shout out to him and just commend him and let all of our listeners know. Here's a man that uh, had a setback because he had a stroke. And yet he is working hard, going through a, a second round of uh, of uh, physical therapy, and he, not only that, but he goes to the pool to walk back and forth in the pool. Oh, that's great! And, um, yep. Yeah, just hard working. Keep it up, Pat. Good job. We appreciate you and uh, praying for you. And looking looking forward to seeing how that that works out for you. Well, JT, today we're talking about finding enjoyment on the job. Now, it's interesting. I'd ask you what you think of that. Uh, a man that is retired. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is kind of funny. Um, I, we'll talk about my old job, and then we'll talk about my new job. How's that? Okay. All right. All right. So the, the old job, you know, I, I will tell you, at the very end of law enforcement for me, like the last eight years, finding enjoyment on the job was very difficult for me. Um, mm -hmm. It was a constant struggle. Uh, and the sad part was it wasn't law enforcement that was the difficult part. It was... You know, as you get towards the end of your career, um, the longer you're someplace, you start to realize that maybe you stepped on people's toes that you didn't know that you stepped on their toes. And mm. a lot of times it probably isn't even realistic when you look at the facts, but they believe it and they perceive it. And, uh, you know, if they get in a position of power, they can make your life kind of difficult. And that's what people did at, at my work. You know, people are, well, I mean, you read scripture, we're kind of petty and, if we're letting our heart kind of run the show, then we're not really doing a good job. Um, yeah. And a lot of times yeah. we take that out on other people. So for me, you know, the environment was very difficult. Um, but now my current job, which is being a full-time dad and chasing my kids around and trying to make sure that they're following Jesus and doing the right thing, um, <laughs> that can be difficult to find enjoyment too, but, the, but it's for a different reason. It's because... It's a grind. You're constantly just kind of doing the same thing over and over again. My wife and I were talking the other day, and we're like, yeah, you know, sometimes life just feels like you're um, 
it's Groundhog Day over and over and over again. You know, you're just kind of like, oh, man, wake up, push the same rock to the same spot, go to bed, wake up, push the same rock to the same spot. But it, it's key, I think, and I, and I know we're going to talk about this. It's key that we keep the perspective of doing things for the Lord and that we're, and that's why we are where we are and why we're doing what we're doing. Um, and, you know, it says all throughout yeah. Scripture, we need to do everything as if we're doing it for the Lord Jesus Christ. So, um, Amen. Yeah. 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 So what about you, man? What are you thinking on this topic? Well, I, when I was thinking on the topic, uh, we mentioned last week that, you know, we have to know that it's a wonder of it all that God is present during e- the ups and downs. And I think that's one of the ways we find enjoyment on the job is that we keep in mind that God has said he will never leave us nor forsake us, that we can be boldly say the Lord is my helper. And if the Lord is your helper, <clears throat> that gives great enjoyment for any kind of situation. Well, today we're talking about enjoyment on the job, and uh, we're thank you for listening to the Power Break Podcast. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Folks, before we start talking about the blog, I want to encourage you to get over to the uh, website, like I always do, check out the resources. At the very least, sign up for the blog to show up every Monday for you, get your week started right. But let's continue to talk more about finding enjoyment on the job as we discuss your blog. <coughs> I got jugged. All right, hold on, hold on, Bob. <laughs> dude, I'm not there to do the Heimlich, yeah. so you better not be choking. I tried to drink coffee and talk at the same time. It just doesn't work. No, no, that definitely won't work. Well, enjoyment on the job. Uh, the blog that I wrote on the and you'll find on the website bobbrubaker.com. From the beginning of man's existence, I said the work has a source of fulfillment and joy. Now think about Adam being placed in the Garden of Eden to work the garden and keep it. It was that very garden that God used to provide food for Adam, and in that garden was but one tree that Adam was restricted from eating. Now think of how God provided purpose and fulfillment in the garden, but that wasn't all. God brought all the animals of creation before Adam to see what he would name them. And then God provided a mate for Adam. And not only that, I want you to see the great blessing that Adam had in the garden as part of the blessing of the blessing of work, giving man purpose and source of accomplishment. Not only that, but God had already established the Sabbath day in which it was to be a day of rest, to be rejuvenated. In addition, God made and presented to Adam a helper, his wife, to be by his side. So he was in a blessed state. And what joy Adam had in his work, his provision, his wife, and the Lord's Sabbath, But before we consider the quest to find the same joy in work, we need to consider how it was lost. Adam, uh, Adam, of course, was was uh, his wife was tempted by Satan and the serpent, and gave in to temptation. And through the lack of control, Adam also joined in and giving in to the temptation, and the consequences resulted. Now, once Adam was admitted to his error in violating the simple. Simple rule of not eating the specific tree God described, and then he laid out God, uh, Adam's consequences. Now, to Adam he said, Because you have listened to the voice of your wife and have eaten of the tree which I commanded you, you shall not eat of it. Cursed is the ground because of you. In pain you shall eat of it all the days of your life. Thorns and thistles it shall come bring forth. Uh, for you, and you shall eat the plants of the field, and by the sweat of your face you shall eat bread till you return to the ground, for out of it you were taken, for you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Now what Adam brought upon himself and all of mankind since then is the struggle to make a living and provide for the family. It's because of this curse that jobs are tough. Sometimes it's tougher than uh, some are tougher than others, but there are seasons of satisfaction. But even on those jobs where the stress is hard to bear, of course, of all types, this is not uh, take this job and well, you know what I'm going to say. It's a good song, by the way. It's a good song. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> the answer is finding the joy of the Lord as your strength and recognizing satisfaction or contentment is a blessing from God that has to be learned through a variety of circumstances. That's what Paul said in the book of Philippians chapter 4. He learned the secret of facing plenty and hunger and abundance that he found he could do all things through Christ as he learned contentment as well. Well, backing up to what you can do regarding your employment situation, 
situation when things don't seem to your liking because all of us face difficulty in making a living. First, remember that you are really working for one person. As you mentioned, JT, that you're not your own, you're, you're, and the real employer is the Lord Jesus Christ, and that therefore you give the best of all at all times. Whatever you do, work heartily is for the Lord, not for men, knowing that from the Lord you will receive the inheritance as a reward. You are serving the Lord Jesus Christ. And so he says in the book of Ephesians that we're not to be giving eye service to our employers, but giving the very best. Secondly, we're to seek and demonstrate contentment in our, in our current situation. It's interesting, as I've counseled people over the years as a pastor, when they face difficulty on the job, and it might be something that I said to you a time or two there, JT, that it seems like God waits for us to find contentment where we are before he opens up another door. Yeah, that's exactly what he does. That's exactly what he did for Amy and I uh, right before our move. We had decided that we were going to move. And then, uh, and that move required Amy to get a transfer. Well, the transfer was actually denied because uh, they did something very strange. They opened it up as uh, as an opening to the outside, so they weren't going to allow an internal person to transfer. Everybody had to apply, even the internal people. And it ju- mm. and it just so happened, Amy got it. Why? Because she was by far the most qualified. Because she was already with the agency. It was. It was one of the weirdest things I had ever seen. But in that whole process, we had just decided, okay, well, it looks like we're going to stay here. Let's start figuring out what we're going to do from here on out. And as soon as we got content with where we were, all of a sudden Amy got offered the job and and we were off. So yeah, that's what, that's what God does. God's um, (laughs) you know, my grandmother used to always say, no matter where you go, there you are. And, and the point of that whole thing is, you know, yeah, it's good. God wants you to be content, and that has nothing to do with your circumstances at the moment. Exactly. Right? Yeah. yeah. If you can't be content where you are, how are you going to be content where, he puts you, where, where you want to be? You know? Yeah, it's false contentment. And, it's, it's really, you know, yeah. everything's new, and, but you didn't get, you didn't fix anything that was broken, let's put it that way. Exactly. So, okay, so we want to remember that... You know, finding enjoyment on the job comes down to realizing we're really employed by the Lord Jesus Christ. We want to serve him and not be a man pleaser, not, not trying to do it with eye service, but really serving the Lord Jesus Christ first. And then secondly, we learn the contentment, and that is found only on depending upon the Lord. A third area is seeking God's wisdom regarding open doors. You don't just jump ship and go out and start going from one place to the other, seeking God's wisdom about it. Because, again, you know, if you're just looking for a change, you can you can change all the time. But, you know, you want to be wise about it and and follow into a, a good and even a better situation. So those are things we, we talked about on the, on the article. You'll find it at BobBrewBaker.com. So what else you want the listeners to know about this week? Well, I thought it'd be uh, good to, to uh, go back to, once again, the battle for the mind, because finding enjoyment on the job is really a, a mind uh, thing, that your minds are being transformed by the renewing of your mind, or you're being transformed by the renewing of your mind, as it says in Romans chapter 12. And the renewing of your mind is what, there seems to be a battle for that. It's, you know, there seems all the things of the world and uh, all the things we call the flesh or inner being that says, oh, I want this, I want this. And so there's a little struggle. And so I, I wrote a series of articles and, and put them in this book called The Battle for the Mind. Check it out at BobBrewBaker.com. And while you're there, check out the sermon links of the sermons I preach here at Christ Community Presbyterian Church in Clearwater, Florida. And the sermons this summer are all based on the Psalms and, you know, Psalm 100 through 110 through the the summer, and you can check them all out at bobrubaker.com. This, the Power Break Podcast. I'm JT, along with Bob Brubaker, and this is time on the podcast for questions and answers. If you have a question for me or for Bob, feel free to email me at jt at bobrubaker.com. We'll get to answering your question on an upcoming Power Break Podcast. So, you know, before we actually get started, and and most of the people that listen all the time know that we're going to go over spiritual, mental, and physical strategies as far as dealing with our topic, but um, Battle for the Mind is just such a great book. And, you know, I, I cannot emphasize to anybody enough 
being conscious of the battle that's constantly going on is something that's really, really important. And this book really helps you to identify the things that are symptoms, really, that the battle is going on. They're symptoms of the battle. They come out of the battle. Um, Because constantly, you know, because of our fallen nature, and we talked about that with Adam and Eve, uh, there's... we tend to be more on the self-destructive side than not. And, Mm -hmm. and it's really important for us to kind of know the signs that we're going in the wrong direction. And that book is such a great way, at least it was for me of just learning the ways to identify that the battle's going in the wrong direction. Right. Um, so yeah, I just want to encourage people to pick up a copy of that. Um, but we'll get right into question number one from the spiritual side of life. So are you saying that sin is the cause of all stress and unhappiness in our work? And isn't it like, so it's not the people that we work with, because honestly, I struggled with that (laughs) because um, now, and and we'll get into it, but is it their sin? Is it my sin? Is it, what is it? I I don't know. I mean, I always, I, I, I'm guilty. I was like, I always thought if I didn't work for that turd, things would be a lot better, but (laughs) <laughs> well, that's a good one, JT. The, yeah, the root of all problems is sin. And, of course, when you're talking about the sin of Adam caused the curse and the, and the pure joy of satisfaction in work to stress, anxiety, and competition, etc. So it's sin in general, because we have sin in our life. Even a person who's a Christian has indwelling sin that he's dealing with. And then a person who's not a Christian that you might be dealing with, they are following a different uh, beat of a different drummer, and that, of of course, is against God. And so there's a constant uh, problem there. But we all have the effects of that sin where now, based on that, work is stressful in all kinds of ways. I realize today we're talking about a lot of digital technology and things working on the computer, and so there's a lot of stress and anxiety that comes from that. But there's also the people that work the ground, okay, that they have a lot of stress about... Uh, bringing things out of the ground and making it, you know, grow, doing their best to see it grow. I know that when I served the church in Arkansas that um, there was many row crop farmers that made a living because of the crops they would have and produce them and sell them on the market, etc. And uh, when it was not raining for a period of time, there was a lot of stress because there was a lot of crops in the ground and waiting for that to happen, of course. The problem is, <clears throat> as God said in the book of Genesis chapter 3, that one of the curses is that there would be, uh, instead of joy and satisfaction in work, you might find some joy from time to time, <clears throat> but he said that there would be stress and anxiety, and as we know, there's competition too. So that curse can be helped as we apply biblical principles for living to our job situation, but the bottom line is understanding that no job is free from the ramifications of sin. Despite people claiming that they have found a perfect job, not only is there a curse upon working in general, but we take ourselves and all of us, our indwelling sin and all the problems we have with us to every uh, job, and we have to deal uh, and mortify lest we overtake. it overtakes us. And sometimes it it just... um, It brings out in attitudes and poor choices and troublesome words, which make things even more miserable on the job. Bottom line, sin in our lives, sin in the lives of other people produces conflict and conflict produces even more stress on the job. The hope is, and the only hope is, of course, is the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ having the power from God to apply biblical principles of not only dealing with ourselves and then being considerate of others and, of course, finding contentment, which is uh, only happens with the power of the Holy Spirit. So, you know, I was thinking about something. Um, actually, it was a conversation with Amy this morning about so when I left, um, for lack of a better way to put it, there was a certain group of people that were in power, for lack of a better way to put it. They were mm-hmm. all friends with each other. They had helped each other get promoted. And uh, one of the guys was a guy that I had been very good friends with, and I cared for him deeply. But at some point or another, he kind of had to make a choice because of the politics, and he chose to kind of be on their side, not mine. 
Um, mm-hmm. Because because honestly, they were doing things that I considered to be unethical, and it, it for me, it was all about when I ran it through the light of scripture, it it wasn't coming out right, so I wouldn't do it. Right, a lot of those things because it didn't put people mm-hmm. first; it put people's it put those people's um, career first. It didn't put citizens first. So anyway. Um, I just found out from one of my friends having a conversation that now, now that the power has shifted again, now he's miserable. Can't wait to retire. You know, kind of mm. like he's in the boat that I felt like I was in at the end. Um, you know, but I can't help but make the comment that the more people get away from God, the more they're more, the more they're miserable with their job. And that seems to be because I that's all I hear is people complain about their job. And in all honesty, it didn't used to be like that. Like, I can tell you for the first like 14 years of my law enforcement career, I couldn't wait to go to work. I loved it. Mm -hmm. But all of a sudden things just changed. And maybe it's because, well, I'm positive it's because we as a society have become less focused on what God wants and more focused on what we want. And the end result right. is... And the same thing happens when you talk about the political... Yes. Yeah. 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 When we talk about the political situation, people get uh, in, in the country, I mean, with, with politics and government. And the, the point is that we understand that we live in a society um, on earth because there is sin and because that we have stressful situations everywhere. And we have to find our satisfaction and our strength and our contentment in the Lord and realize, you know, a job is a job. Yeah. And we're very thankful right. when those have those good days of the job, but it's still a job. And the, the real contentment is in the Lord Jesus Christ. Anytime we try to find contentment outside of him, we set ourselves up for a lot of stress. Yeah. And, you know, something that that leads us perfectly into question number two. So let's come up with some mental strategies on how to make the best of those (laughs) unenjoyable situations that we just struggle to go in on a daily basis. Well, first and foremost, I would say to seek God's help to be content. If you can't find contentment where you are, and just leave for another job, you will take you with you, as we talked about. That's what Granny was saying with that old saying. That was it. No matter where you go, there you are. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Loved it. <laughs> so if you want to find contentment where you, uh, where you want to be, well, you need contentment where you are. Learning contentment is not an option for a Christian as much as you might like to be content. You can't unless God enables you to be content, and He will teach you contentment through your experiences. And not only that, but some of those experiences are rather tough. As it says in Romans chapter three, chapter five, verses three through five, we rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, or you could put in contentment there. And contentment produces character and character produces hope. And hope does not put us to shame because God's love is poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit has been given to us. It's also important to learn that you are working for the Lord Jesus Christ. We keep emphasizing that. So you seek to do your best, which means you avoid the gossip chain and the group complaining and how bad people are around you. You you avoid that. And if you decide to look for another job, well, you say God's wisdom in that and leave the matter up to him. You do what you need to do to find another job, but understand God is looking for you to be content where you are before he opens up another door. Yeah. You know, and it's so important, you know, for me, um, it's something that really became obvious to me recently. You and I discussed it a little bit when I was down in Florida. Um, you know, you really need to make sure that you're surrounding yourself with like-minded folks, with folks that are focused on what they should be. Mm-hmm. And they're not folks that are, um, you know, can't, complaining all the time or getting involved in the gossip or Whatever, because that stuff really rubs off on you. If if you allow that to be around you all the time, then what happens is uh, unconsciously you'll start to be just like that. Um, so yeah. I think it's really important that we follow the old biblical principle of you know hear no evil, see no evil, right? Um, 
not allow those things to actually come in. I know it's not biblical. I wanted to see if you were going to say something to me, but um, <laughs> but I see those three monkeys. I don't know. I don't... That's right. There is three monkeys. Yeah. No. It was. I think it was more of like a nursery rhyme kind of thing. But anyway, we. If you don't allow those things into your heart, that's a biblical principle that you can lock into. Then you know it's not going to get you distracted and let you fall into those situations where you're un. It's an unenjoyable situation for you because, you know, all of you guys feel like you're on the Titanic and you're finding, like, comfort in that. Yeah. That's a that's a very dangerous situation to find yourself in, right? It is. And I was very thankful that uh, the young man in our church that has a job where they're they're putting pressure on him to do things that are unethical, and he did, he refused to do that, and he's he was— he came to me and mentioned that, and so I had him step in my office and come here. He stepped in after one, work one day, and we just spent time in prayer, praying about his situation. Yeah, that's good. And um, yep, that's 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 important to find somebody. Like if you are finding a situation where it's in, you feel like it's very very difficult at your job and you're not finding enjoyment, then you know talk to your pastor. Let's get together to pray. And uh, pray that God would give you grace in the meantime, but also open up the door that he would have for you. Yeah. Anyway, just a thought about that. No, it's great stuff, man. All right. It's time for us to turn to the physical side of life. Uh, And, you know, this is such a great, this is such a great topic for us because all of us are in pain at some point or another, right? Unfortunately, the old, (laughs) the old body sometimes just can't hold up to this. Well, in my case, the dumb things that I make it do, right? So if you Well, that's another it's, it's another ramification from the fall of man. Yeah, that's right. That we have pain in our body. That's right. And then the older you get, the more pain you have. If you want to read about it all, just go to Ecclesiastes chapter twelve. It describes what getting old is like. Yep. Yep. One of my favorite books. Um so <laughs> it, so if we're gonna work out and we're in pain does it make sense for us to take an anti-inflammatory like an ibuprofen or something like that to make the pain go away or um or should we try to just kind of tough it out through it what's the best option there well it's it's something that i checked out because a lot of people do that i I know of many athletes you know that pop a few ibuprofen before they go out on a workout and um, it helps to suppress the pain and sometimes those commercials kind of lead that way but it's not a simple fact. It's not so simple because the fact you could bring greater problems and set yourself up for a lot more pain. Studies have actually been complete, uh, completed on athletes that uh, showing that long distance running indicate that uh, those taking ibuprofen seem to increase pro-inflammatory markers and oxidative stress when compared to uh, participants who did not take any. Oxidative stress increases when the body is not able to clear free radicals as quickly. You know, okay, there's big time stuff, but eliminating free radicals, which are essentially molecules with un. Uh, paired electrons are the reasons why people are often recommended to take antioxidants and consume foods with high uh, levels uh, that will fight against that. When free radicals are prolific in the body, they cause cell damage. Okay, that's what we're getting here. So the ibuprofen, taking ibuprofen can cause more of these free radicals, which can actually do damage in your body. That's the bottom line. The research showed that using ibuprofen had no real decrease of soreness, actually, compared to non-ibuprofen users who did not use um, less muscle, and they did not have less muscle damage either. Also because the ibuprofen tends to direct more blood toward the stomach and intestines, which normally have blood shunted away during exercise, people also taking experience um, some kind of blood flow uh, and conditions known as uh, it's, it's endotoxemia. Okay, big time thing means you got gut. You can get gut problems by taking ibuprofen and then exercising. So it's just not a good idea. <laughs> no, you know, in, in, and to a certain extent, I always had the philosophy that if I have to take a pain reliever to work out, I probably shouldn't be working out. Um, and, and the only reason why I believe that is because uh, I know when. I'm sure that you had cortisone shots when you played football, right? Yeah. So I would have a cortisone shot. I'd go out and, you know, I'd feel great. 
do the whole practice, no issues whatsoever. It's all good. But what I ended up figuring out was I was just prolonging the damage by not... Or doing more damage. Or doing more, yeah, by not feeling that I shouldn't push off on that. And Mm -hmm. because your body's going to tell you, okay, you're not ready yet. So Mm -hmm. here's some pain, get the weight off of it or whatever. So I really try to be conscious of that so I can actually know what my body's up to uh, and where I'm really at. So, um, yeah, I don't know. That's my two cents on that, buddy. God, God put pain in our bodies. I mean, the the, uh, the ability to have pain um, <clears throat> as a recognition that something is wrong. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's why. It's and there. then when we try to hide it with painkillers, uh, there could be problems in the long run. Yep, that's the bottom line. That's exactly right. Yep. Well, it does take discipline to apply common sense to taking anything. Uh, for pain, but especially important to check the research before you take something to use during exercise. And of course, as we always say, discipline makes the difference in all aspects of life. Check out today's show notes at BobBrewBaker.com. Click on the Power Break podcast. Today is show number 309. And submit your questions by email to JT at BobRubaker.com and listen for our answer on an upcoming Power Break podcast. We mentioned again this week, The Battle for the Mind, the book that we're talking about on the podcast today, and you can check it out at BobRubaker.com. Click on the resources and go to the books, and through the books, you'll find it. The Battle for the Mind. Well, thank you for joining us for the Power Break Podcast. Please subscribe and leave a review wherever you've downloaded the podcast, and check out show notes, news, Bob's weekly blog, and other cool things at BobRubaker.com. And listen next week for the Power Break Podcast.